There is so much on the line, Ross. Friday night football, Collingwood and the Western Bulldogs uh, lost in recent times. Uh, they lost the last couple of weeks. And you look at this, Jordan to go, Adam Trelaw facing his old club again, Ross. But there's issues for both of them at defensive end, isn't there, where they're both conceding big marks due to the... Uh, yeah, well, last there. week, the Bulldogs conceded 21 marks yeah. inside 50 to Port Power. And uh, Collingwood gave up 18 to Richmond. Almost double their average. But they're... In the AFL pecking order, defending marks inside 50, which is the easiest way to kick goals, they're right down the bottom of the ranking. So they've got some issues. Yeah, Alex Keith will be back, which will help the dogs. But here was Craig McRae speaking today at training about the issues defensively. Yeah, we have to be on our game. I, I, I'll add to that. Our pressure was the worst for the year around the ball, so that doesn't make Darcy's job or any of our back stops easier. So we need to get that right first. So we want to look at both matters and that. Is it pressure around the ball? Is it defenders not playing the right way? I want to go back to round, uh, the third quarter against Geelong when the Pies were flying. So this was off the charts. This was as good a quarter as you'll get from a side this year, Ross. They kicked nine goals one when their pressure was just red hot. Well, they did, you know, and they kept it going. But then as it drops off, yeah. we know what happened in the last, last quarter. Ball, yeah. Cameron got to work. But this is red-hot pressure. So this creates dirty ball. They've just got to get rid of the ball. So their defenders, they play a really assertive defence. They play. If you're my opponent, they play up in front, relying on dirty ball. But I think... I watched Melbourne on the weekend. They're the number one defence in the AFL, really excluding Fremantle. And May and Lever... Um, Petty, they play back shoulder yeah. and ball side. They don't play 10 metres up. So, and their pressure is almost as good as anyone where they're going. So I think if you keep getting the feedback, mm. the key forwards keep give, um, kicking What's bags of goal and you're losing by 20 points, maybe you need, need to adjust. We played this with Lynch to. last week, didn't we? We said Lynch could be an issue and now Norton will be the same, won't it? Well, he's, he's a freak. If yeah. you let him run and launch at the ball and no body. But if you take his leap off him and his movement, it, like most key forwards, they come back to the field. But the game's change. You just have two people standing in the mark. Slow ball movement, but you've got the overlap run. Um, ball movement's coming in quick and they're getting plenty of space. So I think they've got an issue... How do they control him? Who do they put to him? Uh, the Pies, I think Jordan Ngoi got off to a great start in the season. His last three weeks, he's just tapered off. Ross, look at the goals and the score yeah. involvement. Friday night specialist, can he, can he lift? Well, he's an impact yeah, player, he is. isn't he? So they need to look at, is that the team going a little bit less, you know, at a high end? Or is it Jordan's dropped off where he's getting the ball centre forward? We need his goals and we need his scoring yeah. involvements because that makes Collingwood a really dangerous team. I'm tipping the dogs with not a lot of confidence. Who do you like, Russ? No, I've got the pies. Yeah. Obviously, it depends on Bontempelli. I thought they'd win last yeah. week. I think Bontempelli's worth four goals to them, no doubt. So, if Bontempelli plays, I think Bulldogs, no Bontempelli, the pies yeah, get up. He's playing. Yeah. He and uh, Keith are back, which is fantastic. No Tim English, as Ed said. The second game is Geelong and the Saints. And the Saints have lost the last two. They're desperate for a win. Just want to touch on the ball movement. They failed, didn't they, big time. Conceded nine goals to one early, and it was game over. Yeah, well, going moment. into this game, they're number three. D50 into the corridor and overlap, scoring out the paddock. But they went in like Port did. Let's shift the Melbourne defence around and switch. But what happens is the Melbourne defence work really hard. They've switched the ball to no avail. They've got four. One, two, three, four unchecked players. That ball goes long. They pick it up and sweep it away. So they adjusted at half-time. That happened all the first half. Here it is again. And even when they did switch and they got an opportunity... They didn't take the overlap run. And they went to school on this at half-time and changed it. So you can see here, as it slows, just stop. That handball must be given. You break the lines of defence and you're out the back. So they, they were no chance to score in the first half. And it was against what they did. A bit like Port, change their whole game plan. And Melbourne takes your game off you. And it just doesn't work, that slow ball movement. But after half-time, they put Brad Hill to half-back, hit the back of the square, take your ground and go, and make it up and things happen. Yeah. And all of a sudden, you get one-on-ones. Lever, lack of pace when you get in there. And all of a sudden, you get one-on-ones in the goal square. King is going to take a mark at the top of the square. Brayshaw, who looked fantastic. Gresham gets to work. And here's King in a one-on-one. Versus Jaden Hunt takes a mark. So that's what they... They won the second half by two goals. So 
write it down. This is how you need to play when you can against Melbourne. You can't be safe against Geelong either. Otherwise, they'll chew you up and spit you out. And this round nine last year, he put on a clinic. Unfortunately, he didn't kick straight. You'll never forget the, him being taken off. He was close to being in tears. But he was just too big for them, Ross. So they can get it in there. He kicked one goal five. It was just too big for Henry. Well, Henry didn't play on him there. No yeah. body on him. Yeah. If you let him just have time and space, he's a magnificent athlete. And he'll have five or six shots yes. on goal. But we saw against May here, May body just yeah. pushes him out of the way. So if they can get someone big and strong, even Henry, there you go, back shoulder, just move him under the ball. Was it a free kick or not? Probably not. So you've got to play with some body, use your strength. If you let him run and jump, he'll have lots of shots on goal. So I'm not sure. Who do you think they can match up with him on? Probably yeah, will one. Oh, Even Blixabs, I think, could be oh, yeah, potentially a match-up yeah. for him. Oh, I think in this one, Jeremy Cameron, OK? The losses. So he's a super player, this guy. So they lost it to Sydney. He kicked zero. He kicked three in the next loss, and he kicked zero again. The man we're going to talk about now is yeah, Wilkie. Yeah. yeah, who we want to get to. Look at Wilkie's scalp. So some players are really underrated. Ross, and he's he's taken those types who can run. So Dugowie, Gunston can run, Toby Green, Gray, Fritz. So I think he's up for this matchup. Yeah, I think ground yeah. level and aerial, which yeah. is what Cameron is. And he is a bit more old-fashioned. He does play with more body. He does make it harder. So I think he's a great matchup. And if he can get it done, it's a big difference, isn't it? Three goals, four to one goal, three. So seven shots to four. He's got a big critical job and his teammates need to assist it's him. It's the get it Cats' done. first game at Marvel, Ross, oh, oh, this year. They've got a pretty good record there. Yeah, yeah they're 9-4 they're out of yeah. the last 13, 69 I'm going the Saints, though, in this one. Yeah, oh, I'd love the Saints' second half. Yeah. I'm a Geelong fan and what they did last week. But the Saints for mine. Hey, the last game we'll look at is a big one. Sydney and the Essendon Footy Club at the SCG. And... Ross, I want to show you this, obviously, the coach. He charged out there after the game. It was an emotion-charged win for the whole footy club. Yeah, how good is that? Yeah. Coach under pressure, being in that seat. Mm. It just takes, it just releases the valve, but it tells you what they were feeling. I haven't seen him that emotional at all. So I think the president was down there and the CEO. A lot of relief. They wrote their own story in that last quarter. Uh, you touched on Ed... Uh, Jack Ginevan and also uh, Cody Waitman. Well, Dyson Heppel plays his 200, and he's one guy that's always had a smile on his face and has been a wonderful player for the Essendon Footy Club. I thought he gave a great press conference this week where he said, what do you want us to do, go out and, and train and yeah. have frowns on our faces? Yeah. Good on him. And, you know, Dyson Heppel, you talk about uh, the players need to get out in the community and do things. This guy's been doing oh, it yeah. since he was 18 yep. years of age. Yep. He's an absolute star. So, Dyson, congratulations, mate. You weathered the storm last week. We wish you an absolute sensational 200th game because you are one of the champions of AFL football.